release is a key thing that goaltenders have to be mindful of. You can't know where the puck is going unless you actually watch the puck off the stick. In that instant that it leaves the stick, it tells you a lot of information about where the puck is headed. Trajectory, angle, direction, and even the velocity of the puck. So as an example, let's take a look at this. I'm gonna shoot some invisible puck, and I want you to read my stick, read my body language, read my follow through, read my wind up, and figure out where this puck is going. Here we go, ready? Example number one. Did you guess glove side high? Well, you'd be correct. What about this one? Glove side low. Now, what about this example here? Blocker side high. Two more. Follow through dictates, that was blocker side low. And the final example, look at this. Five hole. So your read of the stick puck relationship tells you where it's going without there even being a puck. Obviously, the instant it leaves the stick, we've got to be focused and mindful on where it goes. But to be honest, the stick puck relationship tells you pretty much what's going to happen. If we just had this puck here and I was somehow CG eliminated and it was just the puck, you couldn't see the stick, it was just the puck and it came in at 100 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour from here without any warning, without any visual cues from my body, from my stick, it's going to go on the net every time. You don't have a chance to react. A couple other things about releases. Shooters like to adjust the angle on the puck. So if you catch a guy with his hands in together, the likelihood of him pulling the puck in closer to his feet before he shoots and do the old Austin Matthews, he's going to open up a lot of net. Elite shooters can also do things like a push shot. Goalie's perfectly on the angle, they can push it wide and then quick shoot it. So we got to be very mindful of the stick puck relationship and we need to catch that first little inch where that puck leaves the stick so we know where it's going. If you don't see it off the stick in that first instant, it's likely going in the net and you're likely not going to be able to react. quality of the pass dictates the likelihood of a one-timer. Here's an off-puck read that's an elite skill. You have to ask yourself, what hand is the man? Where is he depth-wise? And what is the player's caliber? Because that all colors the result of what can happen off of the one-timer. These instantaneous observations color your response. Do I slide over or do I hold my feet? Rule number one, if it's a high zone pass way out by the tops of the dots, tops of the circles, hold your feet. You'll have lots of time to react to get your butterfly down or reposition to another attack. So if it's a high zone pass, hold your feet. Rule number two, if it's a crappy pass outside the wheelhouse or bouncing, get over on your feet. There's no need to slide every single time. On a crappy pass outside the wheelhouse or bouncing, hold your feet. Rule number three. If it's a great player in the mid zone or a tight backdoor pass, that's when you slide. A great player can manage a bad pass much better than an average or mediocre player. So if it's a great person on the ice, you better know your personnel because it's gonna color how you play these off puck threats. Another key thing to look at is the shooter having a mature versus an immature release. Nice. Novice players start with the puck behind their body and accelerate it forward before shooting. This gives the goalie tons of time to trigger an E-drive. However, elite players don't need this loading phase and often set the puck off their front foot. This gives the goalie almost no warning, so our knee drive must be primed for this. Alexander McGilney was the best at this, making NHL goalies look average. And the GOAT has learned over the years how to use it to his advantage as well.
All right, this week we got another drill, Josh. This is gonna be the Butterfly RVH Hinge Drill. Like all drills and skills, once you have the pattern down, strive to use game speed. Focus on violent knee drives, consistent toe bridge landing on the post, and powerful pivots than pushes. And you'll notice on here, Josh isn't necessarily going full speed, and that's something I'm on him about to pick up his speed on this, and also trying to be perfect on your post landings. Once in a while, he got boot break in, which does have its place, but in this drill here, let's really focus on landing on the post with our toe bridge. All right, this week we've got a great drill with Josh, a puck drill. This is the low angle drive drill, and obviously it's a game situation drill. And this attack is completely dependent on time and space, so that's your first read in a game. If the man has pressure and no route to the front of the net, you can be planted and set. However, if he has time and space, as Rizzo does here, he will try to do goofy stuff that he wouldn't if body checking was a threat. A slight challenge gives you momentum on your retreat, and a better chance to get to the back door. To make a variation on this drill more game-like, add a D-man arriving late to pressure the attack. Trust me, Rizzo wouldn't be getting so cute if Shea Weber was on the ice. He'd be waking up in the hospital with another conky. Yeah, that's all I 